Um, so today I'm gonna do one of your favorite videos. I'm gonna do an update for you of my 2024 fine jewelry collection. So I only have one pair of fine jewelry earrings so far, which are my Bulgari, Bulgari Bulgari collection, white mother of pearl with rose gold studs. So this is what they look like on the back. They do have the same sort of backing as the Van Cleef and Arpel Sweet Alhambra earrings, I um, believe. So they can be a little bit fiddly to take on and off. I've gotten the hang of it. It's easy for me, but for people new to the brand or new to this style of backing, it can be a little bit hard to get on and off initially. So what you need to do is squeeze these two pieces together. So I'll put them in for you so you can see what they look like. Now all of these jewelry pieces, I have done unboxings and reviews on my channel. So if you want to check out any of the individual videos, head over to my channel or you can go to the description and I'll have links for all the videos in the description. But this is what they look like. So they're a centimeter in diameter. So if you can imagine, I'm going to put sweet Alhambra earrings in black onyx here, which are also a centimeter in diameter. I tried to get the piercing done further enough apart that they wouldn't rub on each other. So this will probably take six to eight weeks to heal and then I'll be able to change them over. I do plan on purchasing the Black Onyx Sweet Alhambra earrings in the next couple of weeks. So I'll be able to do an unboxing for you guys on my channel. But these earrings are just perfection. I know they're mother of pearl. You're not supposed to shower in them. You're not supposed to get them wet, but I do. I've had them in for a couple of years now. I wear them in the shower. I wash my hair in them. I pretty much never take them out. Maybe some of the mother of pearl has dulled a little bit, but I actually can't remember. Like I can't tell the difference because I feel like they're still pretty shiny. They haven't shrunk at all. I do know Van Cleef and Arpel Mother of Pearl can tend to shrink when it's exposed to too much water, um, but I'm actually not sure about the Bulgari one. Pretty much the perfect earring. Okay, next item on the agenda, we're gonna take a look at necklaces. Now I have two fine jewelry necklaces, both from Tiffany & Co. One is the beaded necklace and the other is the diamonds by the yard. So I will grab those for you now. So the first one I'm gonna show you is the Tiffany & Co beaded necklace. I believe I might've got this in uh, 20 inches or maybe 18 inches. It's a longer style. This is what it looks like on. So it does sit a little bit longer. I do plan on adding a pendant at some stage to this. So I just wanted a nice plain chain to wear every day. I either wear this one or I wear the diamonds by the yard and I pretty much never take them off. They're super comfy to sleep in, to swim in, to do anything in. Um, because they're solid gold, they're completely fine to get wet. They can, you know, go in the pool, go in the ocean. You can exercise in them. No issues. That is what the beaded chain looks like. Now the next one I'm going to show you is my Diamonds by the Yard. When I got this, I was tossing up between Cartier has a very similar necklace um, with a single solitary diamond, but I like how this one is rounded. Do you see what I mean? The edges are completely round. And I just really loved that over the Cartier one. The diamond is so beautiful. This one is in 16 inches, so it sits just about here, it sits quite high. So sometimes I wear a long necklace and sometimes I wear a short necklace. I believe this might be the 0.14 size diamond. I'll just undo this for you so I can show you what it looks like. There is one annoying thing with this necklace though, throughout the day it turns and it ends up like over here. So you think because it's gonna sit, you know, in your neck perfectly it just doesn't it turns all the time and it flips around which is a bit frustrating but whatever it's fine so that's where it sits on me and the diamond on it is just so beautiful okay so the next item we're going to take a look at is rings so the first one being my custom made 
oval diamond engagement ring. This ring has a total of 52 diamonds. It has a double, it has a double um, halo. So it has like a bottom halo and then a hidden halo. And then it has diamonds all down the sides. So we had this one custom made. Um, it has a GIA certified diamond in it. Um, the way that you custom make them with a GIA certified diamond is you buy the diamond first and then you have it set however you want to. So um, you get a full certification with your diamond um, about you know every aspect of it and uh, the color, the clarity, the cut, everything. And then when you have a band made, they will just match the color of the diamonds and the clarity, etc to the center stone. So this ring in total is 2.5 carats. Um, the center stone, I think from memory might be about 1.7. It has such an incredible sparkle and I just absolutely love it. The next ring I have to show you is my Cartier Love wedding ring in the size small. So this is the thin version. I purchased this in the size 55. To match my Cartier Love bracelet, which is also in the thin, small version. Now, if you're interested in any of these items, I have done individual um, reviews and unboxings on my channel, so I will link it all in the description. So you can just go in there, check out, you know, which video you want to view, and then you can access it directly from the description. Now, while we're running with Cartier, talking about this thin love ring, I will show you my love bracelet. It's also in the thin. They're both in rose gold. Although Cartier is known for their rose gold turning very yellow, I feel like my bracelet still looks pretty rose in color. But I mean, if it changed to yellow, I wouldn't even care because I like both anyway. So I purchased this in the size 17, which is the most popular size in the love bracelet. Either 17 or 18 tends to be what most people are. Um, this one being the single, it clips open and then you just screw the screwdriver on the one the other side has a hinge. So it's not like the original love bracelet where you have to screw in both sides. It's just a one side screw and it just is like half a turn, clicks, and then it's locked, half a turn, unclicks. Very easy to open. Let's see. Then because I have the love bracelet and the love ring, I then got the love bracelet in the, in the, um, the chain version. So this is it here. Put it on and I'll show you what it looks like. But it has a nice chunky chain. Pretty much this ring in a bracelet form. Now the chain version of the love bracelet I've only worn a couple of times so you can't really see any scratches on it. Nice thick chain. And because I like to be matchy matchy, because I got these Bulgari earrings in the white mother of pearl, I then purchased um, the black onyx bracelet to match. So this is black onyx with parve diamonds on the other side. So as you can see, it's the same. Same collection, Bulgari Bulgari collection. And this is in the size small. So this is a bendy sort of bracelet and it just bends around your wrist. It is pretty stunk on my wrist, but because it's so thin, it's just super comfy and it doesn't even bother me. I don't really even feel that it's there.
And then the next items we're going to get into is by far my favourite, my Guilloche Van Cleef and Arpels Five Motif Bracelet. As you can see, when the light hits it, it reflects and it looks like a sundial. I feel like a lot of people are saying that Van Cleef and Arpels are getting like too overpopular, too overdone, same as Cartier, everyone has them. But in reality, it's very easy to get into like an Instagram, YouTube bubble where you feel like everybody owns these things. But where I live, nobody owns them. I don't know anybody else that has any of the jewelry that I own. I don't feel like they're overdone because I just never see them out. Yes, they are all over Instagram, but you know, I wonder if a lot of the ones on Instagram are not even real anyway. A lot of people make super fakes, they buy super fakes, and some of these influencers that are just like dripping in jewelry everywhere, I don't know how they could possibly afford all of that. I mean, all of these items I've had to really save up and, you know, space them out because the reality is they're super, super expensive. And who on earth can afford to buy all of these things and just have like arms full of jewelry? Not me, anyway. So I'll show you some close-ups of this. So I got this one first um, from Van Cleef. Well, actually not first. I did have a vintage Alhambra gray mother of pearl necklace, but I actually ended up selling that because I prefer a necklace that I can keep on all the time. And being mother of pearl, and especially being Van Cleef, I know it's super delicate. So I didn't want to be taking it off, putting it on every single time I had a shower or jumped in the pool. I just found that so annoying. And I also felt like, I don't know, but it just felt really big on my neck for every day. I wonder if I would feel different if it was a different colored stone. I would consider like black onyx for a necklace, but you know, the taking off and on just, I just can't do it. it just irritates me so much. I'd rather just something low maintenance that I can put on and you know, not have to take off, especially in a necklace. Bracelets I take off every single time I get home. I can't stand wearing them all the time, which is also part of the reason why this small love suits me because I couldn't deal with the restriction of having, you know, to leave a love bracelet on all the time. It would just do my head in. Does anyone else feel like that with their jewelry? I know a lot of people put them on and they leave them on and they just never take them off, but I just can't deal. I need to take everything off my hands and my wrists every single time I get home. The only things that stay in is my earrings and my necklace. So I need to make good choices with my earrings and my necklace because they're the ones that, you know, everybody sees all of the time. This sort of thing, you know, it's just like occasional. I don't wear it all the time, obviously. Um, I'm a theater nurse, so I can't wear any jewelry at work anyway, apart from earrings and necklace. I can't have anything on my hands, anything on my wrists. So, so I like to buy really incredible pieces that I know are going to last me pretty much a lifetime. And this is literally the most incredible piece of jewelry I've ever seen. When I opened it up in the box, I just was like, holy shiz, you know, it is so beautiful. I don't know how they could even make something so perfect. Because when I compare Van Cleef and Arpels to say Tiffany, the quality is not the same. There's no way that it is on the same level. And even though they are pretty comparable on price, from my experience anyway, the Tiffany items that I have, when I look really close at them, they're just not as perfect. Especially their clasps, you know, where they're soldered and stuff. They just, it just doesn't look, it's just, it's, Van Cleef is on a completely different level, really, honestly. RTA pieces are incredible too, like perfection. So I like to spend my money at Cartier or Van Cleef. I prefer to spend um, a large amount of money on a piece that I know I'm gonna keep forever. It's gonna be, you know, in my jewelry collection forever. I'll never get rid of it. I'll pass it down, you know, to my kids. That's my idea. So although these items are super, super expensive, um, I feel like I can justify it because of the quality and, you know, they're gonna last me a lifetime. This was the first bracelet that I bought from Van Cleef and Arpels. I did have it shortened to 18 centimeters so that it fits my wrist better. The original length of them is really, really long and just way too long. Um, so I always have my bracelet shortened, but because they are 18 centimeters, the motifs cannot be evenly spaced. So I'll show you some close-ups of that. My second item from Van Cleef and Arpels that I got is the white mother of pearl and the five motif bracelet. This was actually a Mother's Day gift from um, my partner and my kids. So it's really special. I 
So I had this one shortened to 18 centimeters. So again, motifs are not evenly spaced. I will show that to you now. This here is longer than the rest. So in order to get it to be 18 centimeters, the motifs couldn't be evenly spaced. And I've had these two bracelets um, resized at two different boutiques and they've both done the same thing. So it's, this is obviously the norm. So you can see four, three, three, three. Now you might be able to see some very faint scratches on there, but it's not visible unless you're literally magnifying it. You can also see very light hairline scratches on the guilloche, but again, you can't see it from a distance. This item can't be repaired, it can't be replaced if it gets scratched, so you have to be really careful with it. But I have come to terms with the fact that jewellery scratches and I'm not bothered by it at all. I plan to wear my items, I don't plan to um, completely baby them. Look at my love. As you can see, this one is well worn and pretty scratched. You can head to Cartier and they will polish it back down for you, but you can only do that a couple of times during its lifetime, otherwise it loses too much gold. But again, from a distance, you can't really see the scratches. The bracelet is the same. Very faint hairline scratches. From a distance, can't really tell. Pave diamonds on the Bulgari bracelet. Black onyx, just divine. This is usually how I like to wear my stack. When you're moving around, they rattle around, but at least I find with the five motif, they kind of slot each other in the gap, which is nice. And then I like to wear my small love with them. So being 18 centimeters, you can see that they still hang a bit but you don't want to get them too short because when they're too short, they are really difficult to put on and take off yourself. So I find this um, size perfect for me. I can fit sort of a finger underneath there and it's very easy to take on and off myself. And then when I'm not wearing my Van Cleef stack, I like to wear these three together. The Cartier chain bracelet, I have also had that adjusted to 18 centimeters, so shortened. When I wear them, they fall all over each other. But that's normal. But these ones, I find, look really nice together. So I'm going for more of sort of a dainty stack. The final thing I wanted to talk about is my 2024 wish list. So the next item I plan on purchasing are the sweet Alhambra earrings in black onyx which will pretty much look like this next to the white, but in a four leaf clover shape, but pretty much the same size as this. So that's what I'm gonna get next. And then I'm also tossing up what my next purchase after that will be. I'm looking long and hard at Cartier watches. I don't own any luxury watches yet and I would really like to get one. So I've been eyeing off the Panther watch um, in either the full steel or the steel um, and I think it's 18 karat yellow gold that they offer it in, in either the small or the mini size. Um, I will put some pictures up for you so you can see what they look like and the comparison between the mini and the small and the gold and steel. Now I'm really confused with these um, watches. I don't know which way to swing. There is a huge price increase between the full steel and the two-tone steel and gold. Um, in Australia, the full steel is sort of like $6,000, whereas the, the two-tone gold and steel is more like $13,500. And I don't know if I can justify such a huge price increase just for adding gold. I know, you know, Cartier gold is really expensive. Everything that they have is really, really expensive, but it's pretty much 
almost looks the same. Please let me know in the comments which way you think I should go. I'm gonna go try them on in a few weeks. The boutique is um, a little while away from where I live, so I have to pretty much make a day of it. I am gonna go check those out and try them on, try them on for size, but I'm just really not sure. Um, do I get a watch? Do I get like a Justin Clue bracelet? I don't know. I really, really am loving the Cartier brush gold, but um, unfortunately the original love bracelet just doesn't work for my lifestyle and my career. So um, unless I was putting it on, taking it off all the time, which can really damage the screws. I don't know. I just don't think I can even consider that. I do really like uh, Chaumet Be My Love items. I love that collection, but I have noticed in recent years, the price has increased so much that I just feel like the prices are comparable to Cartier and Van Cleef. And I, I don't know, like, I feel like it's a, it's a lesser known brand. How are you, how are your prices the same? So I don't know, I did really hope to add something from that collection um, to my own personal collection, but I just can't justify the price of the bracelets. So yeah, I tried on this watch um, from Bulgari the other day. It's a Serpenti uh, watch. So I will insert that here, but I did feel like on me, the watch face um, was too big. Although it was absolutely beautiful and stunning, it was just too big. And I think if I was going to wear a watch, it would need to resemble more like a jewelry sort of feel and have a smaller face. So it doesn't feel like a big chunky watch on me. But yeah, that's my fine jewelry collection. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments what you think I should add to my collection, whether you think I should go with the watch and whether to get it in steel or two-tone, or if you have any better ideas, um, please let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Don't forget, I would love it if you would join my luxury community. Have a great day and see you on the next video.